Hello, thank you so much for joining our webinar today. My name is Vicki. I am our in-house Microsoft Outlook trainer. Today we are going to go over some insider secrets, tips, tricks, lots of good information to make Microsoft Outlook work for you. Get right on into it. Going to start with a quick overview of what we're going to be discussing today. We're gonna to go over some keyboard shortcuts and how to best use the help option for people who are brand new to Microsoft Outlook. We're going to go over productivity and calendars, quick steps, rules, and search folders, forms, templates, and quick parts. We're going to look at some additional customization options, we're going to look at how to speed up Outlook search and how to slow it down. We're going to touch on some other tips that don't quite fall into the uh, categories above. And then after everything is said and done, we will take your questions. So moving right on into it, we're gonna start with the help window. The reason we're starting with this is because it is a little bit backwards from the way that the help feature used to be in Outlook and in most of the uh, Microsoft Office suite. So instead of a help button, which used to be up in the upper right corner, it is now this little light bulb that says, tell me what you want to do. So rather than using it as a search feature, rather than saying, okay, what do I want to do? I want to set up a signature. Uh, instead of saying how to set up a signature, just say uh, signature. And you can type it in. It's going to take you right to the feature that you want to access. So that is a little bit different uh, way of thinking than we're used to, but it is a little bit more intuitive. The search results will come up a little more naturally. Think of it as you're asking uh, the person next to you a question. If they say, you know, uh, tell me what you want to do, just give them the answer. You know, I want to schedule a meeting. I want to uh, make a contact group and it will give you the answer and it'll pop right up with the screen that you're looking for. Rather than telling you how to do it, it just gives you the screen. So again, I like the signature option. Um, it's a good way to uh, demo that particular feature. It does also show you the recently used. So if you opened it and it, uh, you closed out of it too quickly, you can go right back over and set it up again. Well, since we're here, let's set up a signature real quick. This will be demo. And it's going to be for the account that I'm currently using. You can also set it up for new messages. You can set it up for replies and forwards. You can do both or neither. So if I'm setting up a signature, we're going to say, my name is Vicki and I am the Outlook trainer. Maybe I'll put my phone number in here. Maybe I'll put an email address in here. Maybe I will use the business card, which is a feature that you can enable in Outlook 365 on the web. We'll take a quick look at those later on as well. And going back to the, um, the next slide, we're gonna look at some keyboard shortcuts. Some of these are going to be pretty basic things that you definitely already know how to do. Some of them are going to be a little bit new or unique to Outlook. So everybody knows, or most people probably know, that uh, there is the uh, keyboard shortcut, Control C for copy, Control V for paste, Control X to cut, Control A to select all. What's neat about Control V is that if you copy a line of text or a block of text and then use control V, it will immediately pop open a new email window. So you can select the text, open a new email without having to click a bunch of buttons. The point of keyboard shortcuts is to save you some time. We do not want to waste time moving our mouse all over the screen, looking for menu options. This is a great way to save time. So if you have the ability to commit these to memory or even write a little cheat sheet for yourself that you stick on the side of your monitor, these will definitely save you some time, especially once you get in the habit of using them. It is a lot of fun, actually, to be able to navigate all through Outlook or through any other Microsoft product just using the keyboard. And some people will be fascinated by the fact that you never touched your mouse. 
And it's always fun to look like a wizard, look like an expert uh, by navigating without ever touching the mouse. So a couple of other shortcuts that are unique to Outlook. Uh, to automatically reply to an email that you have selected, you can use Control R. Alt W is to forward an email. Alt R is to reply all. I say use with caution. A lot of people do not need to reply all all the time. And you can get yourself into a little bit of trouble if you are replying all to things that maybe you should not be passing along to everybody. Um, so use that one with caution. Control R for reply is probably the better choice unless you know for sure that everybody needs the information that you are sharing. Uh, Control Shift V is the move items menu. That one I will show you. So Control Shift V. It's going to allow you to move emails automatically uh, to your folders. So right now this is a brand new demo account. There's not a lot in here. I don't have any folders set up. We are going to go into how to set the folders up, but I wanted to show you a brand new, bright, shiny, clean version so that we can see what it looks like when we start to do the customizations. But if you are someone that has lots of folders, dozens, hundreds of folders, the uh, Control Shift V option pops up this move items window so you can immediately and quickly move items to folders. You can arrow down through them, use the keyboard to hit uh, enter on any of these things that you need to access. So that is a very, very time-saving option um, if I recommend any of them that you memorize. Control Shift V is going to be that one. Uh, the other one that is fantastic is Control G. Control G, when you are in the calendar, will bring up the, oops, why are you? Well, that's different, all right. Not sure why it did that, but we'll put you back over where you belong. Uh, the control G brings up go to date. So if you know that you are looking at, you know, let's say I want to find out what I have going on 11 to 17, you can just type it in rather than navigating all the way through. Even better if you're looking at something way in the future or way in the past saves time from clicking over through the months, through the years, and finding the date that you want. You can just use Control-G, go to date, there you are. Uh, going back over to the Outlook screen, you can use Control-1 to take you over to your mail screen. You can do Control-2 to go to the calendar, Control-3 brings up your uh, contacts. And if you need a reminder which one's which, down here in the uh, bottom left corner, you'll see the first one is mail, that's Control-1. The second one is your calendar, that's Control-2. So these uh, hotkeys will save you some time from having to move your mouse all the way down to the bottom of your screen. You can just tab back and forth between them with Control-1, 2, Three, five takes you to tasks. If you are someone who uses tasks and notes, um, that is a good one. But I find myself using control one and two to go back and forth between the inbox and calendar fairly frequently. So, uh, last one on this list is for additional shortcuts. If you right click anywhere in Outlook or in any of the Microsoft programs, you will see that there are underline letters on the menu. So if you forget what it is that you are looking to do, or if you forget what the hotkey is, right click where you want to go and look at the menu options. The underline letter is going to show you what hotkey you're going to use. So if you forget that replying is control R, you open this up, you see, oh, the R is underlined. That's my hotkey. So even if you don't memorize everything, or if you, you know, find out later on that there is one that there's a feature that you're going to use a lot and you want to have a hotkey or you want to know if there's a hotkey, that's a great way to look that up. All right, moving on, productivity and calendars. So, of course, productivity is going to be a uh, hot button important thing that most businesses are looking to maximize. You want to make sure that you are getting the most out of your time, the most out of your employees, 
So we are going to look at ways to make your life easier within the Outlook environment. All right, the biggest one, especially if you have a lot of emails coming in all the time, especially if you end up with a lot of email threads, is going to be toggling over to the conversation view. If you're used to using Gmail, you may, um, or other webmail features, or I'm sorry, other webmail options, you may be used to a conversation view. If you are an Outlook user primarily, the old way of doing it was having every single email in its own line, its own option. Now we have the option here to switch over to conversation view. So if, as you can see, every email that I have here is all part of the same conversation. I'm talking with myself, like I have some sort of three personalities as opposed to just three email accounts. And we're discussing what I'm going to have tomorrow for lunch. So if I want to minimize how much clutter, because right now this is taking up four lines when it's all one conversation. What I can do is go over to the view tab and click this box up here. It says show as conversations. So when I do that, it's going to compress everything into one message thread. I also have the option, if you look at this pop-up, I can apply this option to all mailboxes. If I want every mailbox that I have, every folder that I have, or um, yep, all the folders in this account to show the conversation view, I can do that. Or if I just want this to be applied to my inbox, which might be nice if you look for a lot of specific emails that you have routed to different folders, a lot of things that uh, maybe a reply has separate information, you may want to visually have those separated in other folders. You can apply it to everything or just uh, the active folder. I'm going to apply it to all my mailboxes, and now I have one line for this conversation. So I can open it up and see the whole message thread. I apologize for how slow this is running. Normally it does not operate quite this slow. Uh, something with the, the webinar going is making it take a hot minute to load some screens. But once it does pop up, you will see there. Now we can see that it is a threaded conversation. We can see everything that was on there um, with the most recent message at the top. So I'm going to close out of that. If I just wanted to see an individual message after I have it threaded, you can click this little arrow over on the left side to expand into a dropdown. Yeah. There you go. Again, I'm, I apologize. It's fighting me just a little bit, but there we go. All right. So now I can see each individual message, and I can open them up by themselves. So. A nice feature that uh, is included in Outlook, of course, we've already discussed about the uh, integration with the calendar. The two definitely go hand in hand together. They are a very powerful tool to organize your life and maximize your productivity. So this popped up uh, with the title Friday Lunch. Uh, I asked myself what we would like to have for lunch on Friday and what's a good time. Outlook is smart enough that it saw that I am talking about Friday and a time, and it's going to say suggested meetings. This pops up and gives me the option to set a meeting for lunch. It is intuitively going to know that I'm talking about Friday. Look, it gives me the time and the date. It even suggests 12 to 12.30. It sees lunch and knows that that is a popular time to have lunch. We can do that. I can enter a location. If I have location enabled, I can put in the address of a restaurant. It'll pop that up and give you um, the address right there in the email. If, it, uh, if I want to do an online meeting, I can just type in online and that, it, that will pop up that way. So let's say I want to go to, maybe I'm feeling like pancakes. I know we said tacos, but maybe I'm, maybe I'm thinking of something else. So we're going to go to IHOP. I know my other two email accounts said that we were talking about tacos, but no, you know, maybe I want some chicken and waffles. We're going to do that. So now this event has been scheduled. And if we go over to the calendar. We can now see that I am having lunch at 12 at IHOP.
I don't have the location enabled on this account just because for speed and being able to get through it, um, I didn't want it to cause any issues. But if you do have location enabled, then it um, will often give you the address uh, for the most local restaurant works really well for chains like IHOP, like Applebee's, Starbucks. Um, there's actually even an, um, excuse me, a plugin where you can just go to a meeting at Starbucks. Um, that is something that's built right in. So there are a lot of um, plugins that you can browse through in the Microsoft Store, see what's going to work for you. If you guys have, you know, somewhere that you have frequent meetings, that is something that you can set up as a frequently used option. One other thing, if we are going to use uh, the online meeting option, I am showing this screenshot here from the web version of Outlook. So this is the Outlook web access. If you have an enterprise Outlook account, you have the option to add Skype meeting or the add the add Skype meeting button. It's kind of a handful to say right to the top of your uh, email or calendar scheduling screens. Um, I don't have that enabled on this free account because again, this is just a demo account, but I do have it on my enterprise version that I use for work. So if I wanted to add a Skype meeting, I uh, can just, all you do is you click the button right there that I have circled in blue, and you can invite people from the screen over here. If you have multiple people in your organization, it will show you their availability immediately. So you can see when is a good time. There is a suggested time button as well that you can click and it will find a time that everybody is free or show you the time that most people are free. Once you send the invitation or the schedule for the meeting, it will pop up uh, with the details right at the bottom. So right down here, this link that says join online meeting, that link will take you right to the Skype meeting at the time that the meeting is scheduled to happen. So that is a fantastic feature that saves you a lot of time. There are a lot of ways to customize those Skype meetings as well, including privacy settings. Maybe you don't want everybody to know that you're having a Skype meeting, so you lock it down to just people on your team. Maybe you want to invite absolutely everybody or leave it open-ended on your schedule. You can leave it as an open-ended item on your calendar. If you uh, set your calendar uh, to a um, public setting, so everybody in your organization can see it, anybody can hop in and join that meeting uh, if it's something that's a little bit more informal, whatever is appropriate for your workflow. Uh, one other thing that is pretty neat that we can do with these meetings Let's open this one up. You can take meeting notes. So one of the integrations that this has that I think is extremely powerful is the ability to use uh, OneNote 2016 and take meeting notes. So let's say that I don't know what meeting, I, or I don't know what notes I might want to take about my IHOP lunch, but if I wanted to do that, here's the way that that would work. I can share the notes with the meeting, so that would attach it to the meeting on anybody's calendar. Or I can take the notes on my own and it will keep it locally to my account scheduled on or uh, attached to the event in my calendar. So I'll go ahead and take a note. And this may take a minute to load, so we'll just talk over it as it loads. If you are familiar with OneNote, the, oh, there we go. We can, we'll just call it quick notes. All right, and as that opens, you have the ability to take notes that are very organized or lightly organized. If you have um, an entire notebook just for meeting notes, then it will show all of the notes from all of your meetings, which you can access through OneNote. Or when you go over to your calendar, if you open up a past meeting, it will show you the notes from that date. So you can see that it automatically shows that what this meeting is, so this is the lunch meeting. You can see the date and the time that it was scheduled. You can see the date and time that the meeting actually occurred, and you can see the participants. Once the meeting takes place, these will turn into checkboxes. It will show either that the person attended with a green check 
or it will show that they didn't make it with an X. Very cool to be able to keep details on who was there. That way you know who got the messages uh, or who got the, um, the information that was given in the meeting, who didn't. So if someone says, oh, I wasn't at that meeting, you can come back and check and see, yes, you were definitely at that meeting, you got that handout, you got that email, you got you know, that information. Uh, or you can say, oh, nope, looks like you weren't there that day. Great way to keep tabs on things because if you are someone who has a lot of meetings and you don't necessarily take role, uh, it's a good way to completely forget about who was there. You know, if you don't have that information already documented somewhere, you may not remember who was at every meeting. It's a lot of information to recall. This is a great way to keep that information and it does show it by the date. So I love this feature. We're going to say, let's see, so I have my notes here. Notes. Oops. Oh, you please type in there. Okay. It's not wanting to let me type in but we can save it and be done with it. Oops. All right, then if you go back into the meeting notes, so if I close this out, you can go back into your calendar, open the meeting notes, or open the instance and then the meeting notes, either with the meeting or with the, uh, the group or on your own, and it will show you those notes. That were attached to that meeting. So this is something that stays. It will be available as long as you do not clear out the data from your calendar. So that'll be there a year from now. It'll be there whenever you need it. Very, very great feature for keeping organized um, across meetings. Right, next that we have, we are going to move on. Oh, actually, I'm gonna go back to one other quick thing. Uh, want to touch on meetings or the calendars. Let's see, going back to the home tab. Have the option to share your calendar, publish your calendar, um, or set global permissions. So if I want to just share my calendar with one person in my organization, I can invite them to accept that. I can invite them to add my calendar to theirs. If you have a team of a lot of people below you, maybe you want them to know where you're going to be, when your meetings are scheduled, when they can come and visit with you or bring things to your attention, or when you are simply not going to be in the office, you can share that with them. You can also request permission to view your recipient's calendar. So if you want this to be a reciprocal relationship where you can see their calendar, they can see yours, you can go ahead and check that box. So if you leave it unchecked, it says it's a sharing invitation. If you check it, it says it's a sharing request. So now you are saying, hey, I want this to be a back and forth. Please go ahead and share this with me. You can stick some notes in here explaining what you're doing and why. Uh, you can also set the permissions here to show availability only, limited details, or full details. So if you show availability only, it's just going to be blocked off uh, in the calendar by the color that you set. If you have limited details, it'll show uh, you know, just the title. If you show full details, it'll have everything that's available, You know what room your meeting is in, what location it's at, um, any other details that you put in there, that'll all be available. So that is how to set the permissions there. You can also um, do the same thing if you wanted to do it globally with the calendar permissions. So if you want your calendar to be available to everybody in your organization, you can set that here. Um, you can also allow for your calendar to be read-only or you can allow it to be read and write. This is something that is very, very helpful if you have lots of people that you need to be able to schedule meetings, uh, if you need them to be able to edit things, have input, be able to uh, you know, change time and date, or even completely delete the items, you have that in here as well. So let's say that I'm the leader of a team, and the people of my team, I want them to be able to see 
the uh, see what's on my calendar, be able to edit what's on my calendar, but I only want me to be able to delete items. So I want them to be able to access them and change them, but I'm the only one who can take them away completely. You can set it to read and write, but uh, I'm the only one who can delete items. You can also set it so that people can delete their own items. That way, if, say, I have a coworker or a team member that sets up a meeting and needs to later cancel that meeting, they can delete that entry, but they can't delete the entry of another team member, only their own. That option is available in the permissions as well. Um, or you can make it so that everybody who has access is able to delete anything that they feel the need to delete. So those permissions are right there in this nice, easy uh, button right up here in the ribbon. It is under the Home tab on the meeting screen or on the calendar screen. So nice and easy access. You don't have to go digging through a bunch of submenus to find it. All right. Moving on for real this time. All right, we're going to go on to quick steps, rules, and search folders. Okay, I'm going to come back to my mail screen. All right, so quick steps are automated actions. They are similar to macros. They are quick buttons up here in this menu that you can set. You can use default ones. You can customize them to your heart's content to perform actions that you use repeatedly. Um, you can apply them to individual folders. You can apply them to individual messages. Uh, you can apply it. You can apply them to everything um, as you see fit. It really depends on what you want to use it for. The best way to utilize quick steps is going to be for messages you need to review before taking action. I'm specifying that because uh, once we get into this, if you are familiar with rules, you might say, well, why, why wouldn't I just do that with rules? Well, the nice thing about quick steps is that they are going to allow messages to go where the rules send them, and then you can individually take further action with an easy click. Rules are going to be something that you're going to apply before you take any action on the item. So, for instance, if I have a team folder set up where anybody who is sending a message from a certain team goes into a specific folder, that is going to be something that you want to set as rules. You don't want to take the time to apply a quick step to every message that comes in from that team, you want it to just immediately go to the folder. So we could set up that folder. Now for quick steps, a good example is if you get certain kinds of email that you want to see first, but then you need them to move somewhere after you read them, a quick step is a great way to do that, especially if there are repeated actions that you need to take on a specific type of email. So a great email is, or a great example is going to be a customer request. Let's say that I get a customer submitting a request for a part. If that email comes in, I want to be able to acknowledge that we got the request and then move that over to the correct team that handles those requests. So since that's something that I'm going to do over and over again, assuming that people are going to make requests frequently, a quick step is a great way to ensure that I've seen the request, that it's not just getting routed to another folder, that the reply is happening, and that it is then moved to the correct folder later. So to create a new quick step, there is the arrow right at the uh, bottom on the right in the quick steps pane. And click on that, click on that, click on that, and go to new quick step. So there are some that are kind of default, that are very commonly used, or I can go down to custom. So we're going to call this one uh, request. And over here, I can choose an action. So choose an action. I'm going to, let's see, we're going to reply because we want to respond to it. So I'm going to add the action. 
show the options here. So the subject is going to be, you know, just respond to the subject. You can set a custom subject if you want, or you can just leave it as whatever the uh, response comes in. Would recommend leaving it um, just so that the recipient knows what message it was attached to. So in the text, you can say, hello, and thank you for your request. We have received it, and it is being processed by our team. And of course, you can uh, you know, be as specific or as vague as you want to be, whatever is appropriate. You can send it with a delay. That way, it doesn't look quite so much like it's an automatic message that's you know, being kicked back. It looks a little bit more personal. Up to you. Okay. Once you have that information in there, uh, you can add the action. You can also add CC. So if you add a CC to it, uh, let's say that, like I mentioned, you want it to go to a specific team, you can add in that team or that individual that would handle that there. Um, or you can, so we're going to not do the CC just yet. Okay, we're going to add another action to forward the message instead. That way the customer, if you don't want them to be able to see that another team was CC'd on it, if you want that to be a little bit more blind for the customer, uh, you, can, you, you can set it up this way instead. So I'm gonna send this to, um, we'll forward it over to my other, my main account, or my personal account. Uh, that's where my requests are going to go. And if I want to set a shortcut, I can set a shortcut. So control shift, let's say this is something I do so often that even a quick step, even clicking that button is uh, too much work, I can set a shortcut key for it. So control shift two is now going to automatically apply this quick step to the message that I am trying to send. So click finish and it is going to be set up on its own. So if I want to have this done, and do control shift two and it automatically pops that information open you can see that it is now working on its own i am replying to the customer and i am forwarding the message over to the correct party so i don't i don't have it set up to automatically send right now just because i am in demo mode but that is, that's what that looks like. So you can see how this is going to make it a lot easier to perform actions that you repeat over and over again. Uh, another good one you can do, and I will just show real quick, uh, is forward, uh, sending it to a folder. Oh, I've got to give this one a new name. We'll just call it folders. Choose an action, move to folder. Choose a folder, don't have any folder set up. So I think it's gonna make me add a folder first, which I'm not going to do just now. But an uh, example for this is let's say that there are emails coming through about uh, finances. And you definitely want to be clued into the finances because that's a pretty important thing that you do in your job. You want to uh, not necessarily have it route. No, I definitely don't wanna do that right now. <laughs> Um, you want it to route to another folder, but not before you've seen it. So you can leave it coming into your inbox, have a folder designated. Oh, there we go. Now you're asking, now you're allowing me to do it. Uh, we can move it over to a new folder. We'll call this finances. All right. So now anything that I have here, I'm going to go ahead and change this to finances too. Oops. All right, so change that over to finances. Now we can add this action. Anything that I decide is related to finances, okay. I can automatically send there. So finances, this one I didn't set a hotkey for. That's okay. This is one where I want to take my time and make sure that I've seen it. So now I'm in the mood for tacos is a financial issue. I have clicked on that, sent it over to my folder, finances, and 
there it is. It's now in that folder with one click. Now, one other thing that I want to show you about this expanded view. If we have this set to the conversation view, and I want to know where a, a specific message is housed, especially if I have applied something in an email chain like this to, I really need to get an external mouse for this. I apologize. There we go. Um, I can see where, will you please, there we go. This particular email message now shows that it is in the finances folder. So if I want to save a specific message out of an email chain, I can do that. I can route these all to different folders if I wanted to. If I'm not interested in this message, I can delete this message, have it go to trash, and still see where the original messages are. So this just gives you even more opportunity to keep track of entire conversations, but then also know where those items are all housed. Right. All right, so that's quick steps. Rules is, as I said, a little bit different. So quick steps are for things that you want to review before you take action. Rules are going to be for messages that can receive action before you review them. So a good example of this is a feature that some very smart person, smart, way smarter than me, came up with one day, decided that they were getting way too many emails in their inbox that were CC'd to them that they didn't necessarily need to take action on. They were things that they, you know, maybe they as a project manager or a CEO wanted to be looped in on just in case they needed to monitor, but there were way too many of them coming through. So what that person did was they decided to create an inbox CC folder. So we can set up a rule to route messages to a specific folder called inbox cc so up here is the rules option you click the drop down just below it and you can create a rule this brings up a create rule screen so we are going to go to the advanced options you can see some of the basic options here where it um it shows you know, the message that i have highlighted so i can apply it to Emails that come from my personal account, I can apply it to emails that are sent to a specific email address or what the subject contains, but we want to go deeper with this. We want to go into the advanced options. So to set up specifically the inbox CC option, you're going to want to select the option that says where my name is in the CC box. Uh, so, uh, you can also set it to where my name is not in the to box. So if uh, it is in the CC box or if it is also blind CC to you, if it's BCC, you may want to select that rule instead. Really depends on what's going to work best for you. You can trial and error that. I would recommend using the where my name is not in the to box. It is a little bit more catch all. And we can click next. and select move it to the or move it to the specific folder down at the bottom here and it's going to give you this blue link unspecified click that to open up the option to choose what folder i don't have the folder set up yet so i'm going to click new set it as a subset of my inbox or i can set it uh, as a separate folder so to set it as a separate folder i'm going to go one up in the hierarchy if i want it to be a subset of my inbox and I would select it down here. I personally want it to be a subset of my inbox. Personal choice doesn't make a difference in how it functions. This one I'm going to call inbox cc. Click OK and finish. Now you can see that it now shows that it is being moved to the inbox CC folder. If you ever want to change that or change where something routes, you can click on that blue link again and uh, change the folder that it is assigned to. You're all done, you can click finish and go. 
or if you want to make exceptions, let's say that uh, you know that there's somebody specific on your team that CCs you on a lot of things, but it is things that you want to see. You can set it, uh, select this box up at the top, come down here and click on that blue link again. You can specify specific people. You can pick them from your contact, or I'm sorry, from your address book if you choose. Right, but we are going to just go on and uh, go to the next button again and turn this rule on. If you want this to sort through everything that is already in your inbox, you can do that as well. All right? If you have multiple accounts, you have the option to run the rule on all accounts, or you can leave it for the specific account that you are working on. Click Finish, and it is now an active rule. If you ever need to manage the rules, if you want to delete that, if you find that inbox CC is not something that works for you, you can manage your rules and uh, delete them or change them from this drop down as well. All right, you can also set rules for conditional formatting. Uh, conditional formatting if you want individual emails to show up in your inbox as a different color. Uh, that way they are a little bit more easily visible. You have the option to do that. If you want them to be in a bolder text, you can do that as well. Uh, there are as many options as you can come up with and you can tweak them as much or as little as you want to create an inbox experience that works for you. All right, so that's kind of the difference between uh, quick steps and rules. Again, just to touch back on it, quick steps are for items that you want to see before you take action. Rules are going to be for messages that can go to a different folder before you take action on them. One other um, thing that we can do as well is search folders. Search folders uh, shows up in your menu, item, or menu list on the left. If you click on it, you can create a new search folder. So the search folder is a handy feature that you can use, if you, especially if you have a lot of folders that are open, or I'm sorry, a lot of folders that are created. You can uh, set this to automate searches that you perform frequently. So let's say, for instance, that you have set up a folder for a specific domain. Let's say you have a client that you work with a lot, you get a lot of emails from them, and you are keeping all of them in a folder called Client A. So in this Client A folder, you may also have invoices. So let's say that you have rules set up to where your invoices go to a folder, and you have your invoices, or I'm sorry, you have the rest of the emails set up to go to a folder for that client. You may want to search for invoices by that client, searching through the individual folders themselves would take a long time. So what you could do is set up a search folder for mail uh, to and from specific people, uh, sent directly to me, or messages that have specific custom search terms. So to let's see, I'll click on the search option here, and we'll call this one invoices from client A. You can select the folders that will be included in the search folder. So if you know that you're looking for invoices and you're looking for client A, you can select those specific two folders, or you can select or you can set it to search absolutely everything. Okay, uh, yep, I do want to continue. And set up the customization based on the search terms themselves. It will show up as a search folder. So now this option is here. I didn't set up the search terms themselves because I don't have the keywords, I don't have everything all um, on this demo account. However, you can see that if you had uh, the invoice folder, and the client A folder, it would then show just invoices just from client A. So 
that's one way to use that. Another way to use it is let's say that you have uh, client A and you uh, work with 15 people in that organization, but you only need today emails from their uh, financial contact. You can set up a search folder that shows only emails from that particular individual from client A. That way you can see the uh, messages that are from the person that you speak with about that topic without seeing everything else that came from that organization. That is a good way to uh, keep track of searches that you perform often. You can, of course, use the standard search, which is up at the top of the second column at all times. You can search everything on the entire account or you can search individual folders. It is up to you. But if you find yourself performing the same search over and over and over again, probably a good idea to set up search folders. One caveat with search folders, this is a feature that is primarily uh, functional for the Outlook desktop version. Most of the features that we're covering today are also available in the web version. This is something that is saved locally to your individual machine. Um, the nice thing about Outlook is that it truly is just a window into the Microsoft Exchange server. Uh, it is not the server itself. So most of your features that, you're, that you set up, your rules, your quick steps, uh, and your folders are all going to be available from one machine to the other, also available from offline to online. Currently, search folders is something that is strictly local. So it's going to be on the machine that you set it up on. It's not going to show up on the web version. Um, per Microsoft, they are working on getting that feature enabled on the web version as well. So it is a feature that should be there eventually. If you absolutely desperately need it, uh, please do reach out to us. We can tell you how to set it up. It does involve uh, tweaking with the offline settings on the web version and then going through some settings on the desktop version. So it's a little clunky, but it is something that is there if you absolutely do need it. For most people, though, having it just set up locally is more than sufficient um, if you do use the search folders. So great feature. Unfortunately, not one available on or not one easily set up on the web version at this time, but a feature that is in um, the pipes for Microsoft to bring to us eventually. All right, we're going to go into forms, templates, and quick parts. This is going back to that uh, original quick step that I set up where there are emails that uh, maybe something that you send very frequently, you can run that macro as a quick step. A couple of different ways you can also set up emails that you use frequently. Uh, you can create a form, a template, or a quick part. Differences between the two. Forms and templates are for frequently sent emails whereas quick parts are templates for frequently typed information. What's the difference? Maybe you have a response, a greeting, uh, a tip that you type frequently and insert into your emails uh, that you do not need to have as an email all on its own. It's a great uh, feature to set up the quick part. We're running a little bit short on time. I want to show you that. If you are interested in a demo on exactly how that works, please reach out to us. It is easy to use. It is very handy, but I'm not going to demo it right now just because we are already running into um, a little bit of overtime. Uh, but it is a very cool feature. I want to show you all the cool stuff that we have. So we're just going to go to forms and templates. So forms utilizes a quick step. So it's a quick step that we already went over. This one is going to just create an email with a preloaded response. You can use that form to shoot off responses, but not necessarily have any additional action taken on it. Already shown you how to create a new one, not gonna go over it again. Imagine that this is an email with a template that you can see a quick response, say, okay, I've got Friday lunch, I just wanna respond to it quickly, click that button, and whatever the response is, I've now sent out. So if you find yourself doing a frequent response, but you don't need any other action taken to it, you can set up a quick step as a form. Templates are a little bit different. 
This is something that is going to save locally as an Outlook template. Something that um, you can do a little bit more customization, a little bit more formatting on. Uh, you can also add images and um, anything else that you need to as well. You can attach files to it. It is, however, something that is saved locally again. So this would be uh, something that is very useful for things like progress reports, supply requests, anything that you are attaching, say, a spreadsheet or a presentation to. Setting that up as a template is a quick and easy way to get that going. So let's say, we'll do that real quick. Um, I am going to type in, we're going to call this monthly report. So if I'm typing in this monthly report and I have, let's see, this is my month, this is my date, and this is my information, C spreadsheet. What I can do is go to File and Save As. And with the Save As option, I can save it as an Outlook template. When you save something as an Outlook template, you can save it to whatever folder you want, and it will be available to you in this format anytime you need it. So especially if you have something that you are sending out frequently, such as a file um, or uh, something with a lot of formatting that you don't want to go through copying and pasting, you can just set up this type of um, template, save it locally, and have it available to you whenever you need it. Again, I emphasize that this is saved locally because this is something that's going to save for you on the machine that you're working on, but not necessarily be available in the cloud. You're not going to see it on the web version. If um, it's something that you definitely need available there, maybe set it up as a quick step instead. So it's a great feature, very neat, very powerful. Um, but again, you just kind of have to uh, weigh and choose how you are going to be using it. All right, going on to the next, how to speed up Outlook search and how to slow it down. Why would you want to slow down Outlook? Well, you don't. So a quick tip that we're going to touch on, a lot of organizations still use PST files. These are files that save absolutely everything attached to your Outlook account, and it is saved locally. Whether it is to an individual machine or to a server, uh, it is not a good idea to have that sort of backup. Microsoft Exchange uh, um, does have the option, obviously, to be saved to the cloud, and, or the files that are on Microsoft Exchange are saved to the Exchange cloud. So you don't want to necessarily have a backup that is constantly running to a local machine. A couple of reasons. One, if it does uh, corrupt, it's gone. If anything happens to your local machine or to your local server, server it's gone. Number two, the file size becomes far too big. You um, are going to run into performance issues. You're going to run into possible data corruption issues. Number three, it will cause the file server to be bogged down. Um, it will cause some issues with the file server itself. If you are someone who knows a lot about file servers, you will know that it specifically on the Exchange services, please do not do this. Do not set it up this way because it will cause uh, issues with the data that you're trying to save, especially as it gets bigger, especially if you're in a bigger organization. So please don't use PST files. It is actually recommended not to use them. They are available um, for, you know, if you have very small backups that you want to use, but there are better ways to do it. Um, one of the better ways to do it is to archive your files. If you want to clear out but not permanently delete your old emails, you can archive them, you can do it automatically, set it up, or you can uh, do it manually when you decide that it needs to be performed. I recommend setting it up automatically. I want to make sure that you're not overloading your, um, or you're not having too big an email inbox to, or email file to search from. It will, again, start to slow things down. So archiving your old messages will definitely speed things up. You can set the parameters for how old you want it to be or how old, how far back you want it to go. Um, so if you need something, you know, from the entire fiscal year or from a calendar year, you can set those parameters, how it best works for you. The other option that we can do is re-index. 
especially if you are using your search folders to their fullest extent. You have a lot of folders, it may start to slow down. If you notice that using your search folders or the search feature uh, is starting to lag a lot, if it's not performing at a reasonable speed, re-index your files and it will automatically rebuild and research for your um, search folders and speed up that process as well. Okay. If you need, I know I'm kind of speeding through this, if you need more information on that, please reach out to us after the webinar. More than happy to go into depth on that. Okay, other quick tips. Um, you can attach recently used files via the file drop-down arrow. Come back over to this. Uh, we're going to reply here. And say I want to attach something. I can attach file. If I click on the drop-down, it shows me the things that I've used recently. So rather than having to hunt through your entire computer, it's gonna show stuff that you've most recently used. Microsoft knows that, or Outlook knows that um, the things that you're going to send are probably gonna be things that you've used relatively recently, or at least often going to be that way. So that is a quick way to find those. You can also disable or customize your desktop alerts. If you get a lot of email and you are getting desktop alerts for all of them, your computer is probably pinging away all day long. Customize them so they only pop up for people that you absolutely need to see their messages right away, or you can disable them entirely so it leaves you alone when you're not looking at your inbox. Uh, you can also add a second time zone to your calendar. If you live near a uh, where the time zone switches from one to the other, um, or if you have clients or customers that are in another time zone, and you find yourself not quite knowing necessarily which time zone you're talking about, you can set up your calendar to automatically, uh, or to have another time zone parallel to the time zone that you're currently in uh, when you are viewing by individual days. And it's a good way to make sure that you are assigning uh, tasks or scheduling meetings at times that are appropriate for everybody in all time zones. All right, you can also, when you are uh, sending files, I will attach a file to show you. Oops. I'm going to attach the PowerPoint that we're using here. Now, options that I have, I can share this as a link to OneDrive, or I can share it as, an, uh, as a file that will be attached in the old traditional way so that everybody gets a copy, whoever is attached, or whoever receives the attachment. The nice thing about setting it up from OneDrive or as a link to OneDrive is that it allows collaborative editing. If you have uh, a file, let's say an Excel spreadsheet that you want multiple people to be able to edit, if you send the link to OneDrive, everybody is now editing one file as opposed to the local file that would be attached individually. If I make a change on my local file, you're not seeing that, um, uh, yeah, or my teammate isn't seeing that change in real time. Collaborative editing available on OneDrive, excellent way to work on something across the board with your team. Um, last tip that I have here is exporting contacts and important messages for backups and transfers. If you have multiple email addresses, if you have multiple accounts, um, or if you just need to back up your contact periodically, which is not a bad idea, you can export your contact, you can export important messages and save those locally, or you can save them to a personal cloud drive. So that is just a good way to make sure that you have your data backed up, um, or you can quickly and easily transfer it to other accounts, save you some time there, as opposed to building it from scratch. So that is everything that I have. Um, I thank you so much for attending. I appreciate your time. I hope you got some good and useful information out of this. But if you have any in-depth questions that we did not cover, please feel free to reach out to us after the meeting or anytime down the road. We are always happy to give you more information to help you out, to help your business meet its needs. Everybody have a great day. Thank you so much.